Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to come to you again. By the grace of God, my name is Pastor David Erabo, and I'm from Mount Zion Chapel, Toronto. This is a branch of the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide. And I welcome you to this deliverance hour. This is the moment by which we get people informed about the, the, the demonic activities, the devices of Satan. The Bible says, be ye not ignorant of the devices of Satan. Today, by the grace of God Almighty, we want to look at the seven gates in the human body. The seven gates in the human body. The human being are made up of seven major gates. And the gate we know is the point of entry and exit. With the gate, you can enter a house. With the gate, you can exit from a place. When the gate is locked, you can't enter. When the gate is unlocked, one can gain free access into a premises. So the same way with the human body, you may have wondered, why is it that this situation is in my life? How does Satan gain access into my life? The Bible tells us that Satan entered Judah to betray Jesus Christ. Look at the scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17. It says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Listen, when we talk about the temple of God, it's not just only the building. You as a person, I as a person, we are the temple of God. And he said, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? God is a spirit, according to John chapter 4. And in the same way, the devil also is a spirit. Demons are spirit. The demons move around looking for vessels to dwell, looking for human body to occupy in order to carry out their atrocity. The question is, how does demons come into my life? Now, I say we are looking at seven gates in the human body. Number one gate is the eye. The eye is the number one gate. We know that with the eyes you can see. When somebody is blind, you may not be able to see what is happening around you. I'm talking about physical blindness. Because of the sensitivities of the eye, when Samson was captured by the Philistines, the first thing they removed from him was his eyes, so that he would not be able to see. When one is spiritually blind, that is when, for example, when you dream and you don't remember, that fellow is spiritually blind and does not know what is happening around him. Now, coming down to the physical eyes, which is the temple of God, with your eyes, you can see how beautiful one is well-dressed. You can see how beautiful that car is. You can see how beautiful that house is. You can see how dirty an environment is. Now, with the eyes, you see so many things. You may be watching the TV as you are watching this program right now. And I know you can receive your healing and deliverance by the Spirit of the Lord. And when a man of God says, you are watching this program, lift up your hands unto heaven. You are sick and I want to pray with you. And when the man of God prays, that's because you are watching that television at that point in time, healing gets into your body. Because with the eyes, the Spirit of God can enter into you. But when the eye becomes an instrument of watching pornographic movies, watching sexual movies, watching people that are half naked, demons can enter your eyes, I mean your body, through that eyes. 
The Bible says in the book of First John chapter 2, verse 16, First John chapter 2, verse 16, he said, These are of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are not of God, but it's of the world, the lust of the eyes. So demons enter the body through the eyes. When you become irresistible to immorality, there is a demon that has entered your body through your eyes. Another gate, gate number two, is the ears. The ears is meant to hear. When somebody is deaf, you cannot hear what is happening around you. When people are shouting, you may not be able to hear. But spiritually, demons also can enter. Listen, we had a deliverance ministration for a sister, born again sister. She does not commit adultery, I mean immorality, she does not commit any sins. And in the course of deliverance ministration, when she came, he said, what can, uh, something is wrong with her. We did the deliverance, and the demon spoke through her and said, she is not going. And we asked the demon, how do you enter? The demon said, they enter through her ears because she listens to everything. If you listen to gossip, you are exposing that temple of God to demonic spirit. You listen to negative things. You listen to talk that does not glorify God. The demons will enter into you and occupy your heart. Now, gate number three. Gate number three is the nose. There are people that perceive the smell which others cannot perceive. You may be in the midst of people and you said there is something smelling. Others will be asking you, there is nothing smelling here. How come you are the only one perceiving it? There is a demonic entrance into your body through that nose. And that is why you perceive the odors that others cannot perceive. The gate number four. Gate number four is the mount. The Bible says, with the heart, one believeth, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What you confess with your mouth matters a lot. A sister in a church ran to a man of God, and he said, man of God, I need deliverance. And the man of God said, for what? He said, whenever I love to speak the truth, lies keep coming out from her mouth. I need help. The lying spirit is in her tongue. There are people, they don't think twice before they give you lies. There are people that think and try to construct the lies. But there are people who are specialists. When they give you lies, you will think that 7 p.m. is 7 a.m. Such people, they have a demonic spirit in their mouth. In the same way, there are people, this category of people, you may be one of them, that love to have sex, oral sex. You are a sister. You, you enjoy the pleasure of putting a manhood of a male in your mouth. Until you do that, you are not satisfied. Or you are a brother. No matter how much sex you had with a lady, the one that gives you the most pleasurable one is when you put your mouth in her genitalia. It is an abomination. When someone practice oral sex, you are defiling the temple of God. A lady came to this church for deliverance, and we were ministering deliverance, and I talked to her about this oral sex, but she laughed systematically and said, how about if my husband said he loves it? Your husband said you should put his male organ in your mouth, like popsicle, like lollipop, and you said you are enjoying it. You may be in the choir on Sunday, you be in the church to sing. With the same mouth, you sing God's praises. The Bible says, can a sweet water and bitter water come out from the same source? It is not possible. Oral says it's an abomination. If you know you're indulged in that, let me tell you, brethren, you are defiling the temple of God. Demons have entered into your body. True, that means... And also, another gate in the body is the genital organs. 
of the male of the female. You are a female, you sleep with any male that come across your way. You are a male, you sleep with anything that come across your way. You are exposing that body, the temple of God, unto demons, and demons get into your mortal body. Or you are a sister, you commit abortion easily. You said it is blood, it does not matter. You are defiling the temple of the living God. This special area of the gate of genitalia, you are a brother, you are a sister, you practice masturbation. It is a sin in the sight of God. Oh, there is no man to sleep with you. You indulge in that personal sin indoor that nobody sees. You are a brother, you indulge in such things in the sacred. You practice the masturbation with pleasure. You are defiling that temple. Demons are coming into your body through that means. Listen to me. I met a woman in this church who visited us at a point in time. And I was talking with her on this aspect. And she said to me, ah, Pastor, how about my husband is not here for me to meet with? That is not an excuse. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. The genital organs is the gate of the body. By the grace of God Almighty, there are two ladies that have come to us for deliverance. One came from Toronto, one came from Brampton, different locations, different times. But they had one common dreams. And each of them said, I had a dream I was naked. And I sat on the floor. Snake crawl into her body through her genitalia and the snake entered she could not resist to say no the demon have entered into her you may be of this category i'm talking to you snake may have crawled into your body in the dream through the genitalia and it's right there you say it does not matter you are carrying the demon of serpent you that sleep with anything that come across your way you see a lady, you sleep. There are some dangerous ladies from the Marie world that inside their vagina, there is a viper in there. You sleep with this lady. You ejaculate into this lady. You think you are enjoying, let me tell you, what is going on in that process. As you are releasing your semen, your sperms into that lady, there is that snake that opened the mouth that collects your semen, the seed of destiny you just release into the mouth of those snakes and they go into the marine world and pour it out and analyze your destiny and your life begin to go miserably and you are wondering what is happening in my life. You need the deliverance. The power of God needs to break that chain of captivity in your life. Another beautiful gate that we need to look at again is the anus. The anus is meant for us to pass out waste. Whatever you eat in the day, whatever you eat in the morning, in the evening, when the good part has been taken away from your body, absorbed by your body, the bad ones need to be excreted, passed out through the anus. But do you know that you use that anus for anal sex? Remember, because of this, God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. The anus is not meant for sex. Why do you defy the temple of God? Listen to me. You see that car that you are driving? Let me tell you. That car that you are driving, take that car to the gas station. Tell the gas attendant, I want to buy gas. You pay for it. And they said, go and get the gas. Carry the nozzle of that gas. Put it in the exhaust of the vehicle. In short, as you are about to do that, by standard, they will run away from you. There are people that will call 911 and say, there is someone that wants to cause explosion in this place. Why do you allow your boyfriend, why do you allow your husband to put his nozzle on your exhaust or for the pleasure of sin? And say, that is the best one. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. When they met Lot, in Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angel visited the Lord, they, they came and said, give us this, we want to sleep with them. Lord said to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, 
Do not do anything to these people. I have two daughters that no man has slept with. Let me give them to you to do whatever you want to do with them. And they said, no, all that we want are these men. Because of this abomination, homosexualism, that was why God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. You are a Christian. Why do you do that? You go to church. You say, my husband needs it. My boyfriend is asking for it. It is an abomination. Don't let him put his nozzle upon your exhaust. It is a sin in the sight of God. He's destroying the temple of God in which you are. And when you do that, the Spirit of God depart from you. You may be a pastor, and you know you'll indulge in that. You may be a pastor's wife. You'll indulge in that. You may be a husband and wife in the church. you indulge in that. Even, you may even sit together and watch pornographic movie together. You are exposing that body to demonic spirit. Anna says it's a sin. Demons enter the body through the enemies when you use it for sex because it's an abomination in the sight of God. Another gate I want to look at, which is the seventh gate, is the umbilical like cord, where you have your belly button. Listen to me, beloved. When you were a baby in the womb, you cannot swallow solid food. You can't drink water. Whatever your mother ate, whatever she drank, goes through that umbilical like cord into your body system. And as a baby, you pass out waste. You receive oxygen through that. You pass out carbon dioxide through that means that goes into your mother's system. You pass out urine that passes through that into your mother's system. You pass out human waste, feces, that goes through that umbilical cord to your mother's system. And your mother's blood will filter those things and combine it with her own, and she will dispose them in the system, in, in the toilet system. When you were born, that thing was being chopped off. Some cases, they throw them away carelessly. Voodoo priests pick them up and use them for rituals. Native doctor pick them up, use them for demonic medicine. In some families, they pick them, take them, and bury them on the earth. And they will plant a seed, the seed of an orange, the seed of a mango, any seed of any fruit, and they plant it and name that tree after this fellow. Listen, do you, if you look at trees, trees never look glorious throughout the year round. For those of us in Canada, if you look now at this particular time, the trees are becoming blooming. The leaves are coming out. The beauties are coming out. When it comes to November, October, November, the leaves begin to fall out. When it comes to December, all that you see is just the skeletal part of that tree. The beauty is gone. And so, my beloved, when yours has been under, that is why sometimes your life shines. Tomorrow, your life becomes so, so downcast that you feel what is happening. The glory is no longer there. Another period, the glory comes out again. My dear, watch out. There is a covenant that needs to be broken. Have a look at these seven gates in the body. The eyes, the ears, the mouth, the nose, the genital organs, the anus. Seven is a perfect number. Now seven is the number that God has given to us. In which area have you abused this gate that demons have passed through into your life? You don't know where to go. And that is why we are bringing these teachings to you. I'm inviting you. This is Mount Zion Chapel, Toronto. A branch of the redeemed Christian Church of God. For the Bible says, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. You are next in line for action. In Revelation, lastly, verse 21. I mean, chapter 21, verse 27. Revelation chapter 21 verse 27 said, Nothing unclean shall enter into the kingdom of God. These things with demons in your body, demons in your life, the accuser of brethren is laying claim upon your life. You desire to live a glorious Christian life, but you cannot. But these things are weighing you down. 
At this point in time, I'm inviting you. The address is on the screen. The phone number is on the screen. The email is on the screen. Call and book an appointment. It's just when you come, you fill the form. And once you fill the form, we organize a deliverance for you. The Bible says, whosoever the son of man shall set free, he is free indeed. Freely ye receive. Freely ye shall give. God has blessed us to minister deliverance to many. And God has used this means to put smile on many people. I look forward to seeing you. Don't forget, the address is 5145 Stills Avenue West, North York, Ontario, M9L1R5. At this point, I want to pray with you. Lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Heavenly Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray for this viewer right now that the devil has gotten hold of by the reason of the past mistakes of abusing any of this gate in the body. Mighty God, I command that fellow right now to be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every stronghold of the devil in your life, I break it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. I look forward to seeing you. Come and the Lord will bless you and make you a blessing. There are people that will talk to you. Forward this message to them. Let them hear it. We live in Toronto. God bless you. God loves you. We love you, but God loves you most. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.